Once Human is an upcoming free-to-play online multiplayer survival shooter RPG MMO. I'm not sure what you want to label this game as, but it is launching on July 9th. And honestly, I think that Once Human is going to be massive. I can easily see this hitting PAL world levels of launch success. And with Once Human running both PvP and PvE servers, I could see this also having long-term success similar to Rust. Today, we're gonna be doing a brief overview of Once Human and hit on some of the high points as well as some of the low points I've had so far playing this game. Specifically, I'm talking about the time that I've spent playing in the demo. Quickly before I get started though, I do wanna point out that we were recently accepted to the Starforge affiliate program, meaning we now have a link if you want to provide some extra support to the channel and you are looking for some quality PCs at some genuinely good prices, go and check out the link in the description. I'm gonna do my best to avoid spoilers here, but let's go ahead and start off with some of the fundamentals which is the label of the game. This is a bit of a mix mash of genres here. We're looking at a shooter, survival, RPG, open world, MMO, all wrapped up into one game and it actually works really well. Once Human is going to be running on official servers, both for their PVP and PVE, and this is where the MMO portion of the game kind of comes into play. We're not yet certain as to what the player cap is for each server. And unfortunately, we're gonna start everything off here with the first of only a few bad things that I have to say about this game. And it's the fact that I'm concerned that if the game does gain popularity like I anticipate it does, that these servers are going to be jam packed and the queue times are going to be miles long. On top of that, even inside of the demo, there are a bit of some stuttering and frame issues that happen when a lot is going on on the screen at the same time, specifically when a big group of zombies is respawning. An excessive amount of players and an overcapped server load is only going to add fuel to that fire for sure, which makes me massively concerned for the launch day specifically of Once Human. I'm sure they'll eventually get that ironed out and uh, settled down, but launch day, buckle up. I think it's gonna be rough. Maybe we get proven wrong though. Let me know how you guys feel down in the comments but people are also concerned about the wipes that are planned to happen. As of right now, it's not guaranteed, but it is speculated that the wipes would happen at the start of each new season. Mainly, the PvE servers are complaining about wipes, but honestly, I don't care either way. But I thought I would bring up the fact that wipes are meant to be happening. And if I'm being real here, those are probably the only bad things that I have to say about the game, because honestly, my entire time playing this game so far has been amazing. Even with the stuttering and the frame issues and all of that, I have had an absolute blast playing this game. It has your typical survival elements with the eating and the drinking and yada yada. But what really gets me excited is that you can build bases inside of these persisting servers. I'm telling you, nothing is more fun than building up a base that you know people will have to, they will be forced to, briefly look at for at least one second as they speed by it, okay? We at least get that one second. But the game also has a level progression system, which is pretty straightforward. Leveling up is going to gain you points, which you use to unlock better gear and weapons. You can gain these points from dozens of things inside of the game. Leveling up is one of them. And aside from that general progression system, though, you also have a map progression and server progression systems, which do things like unlock more regions of the map. Speaking of the map, inside of the demo, I've only had access to a very small portion of it, but even in this small portion, there are tons of things to do. Random events that happen, you can have, oh, I'm not gonna spoil it, random areas that grab your attention and like really, they force you to go explore them when you see them. For me, it's been practically non-stop and I'm, I'm really just dying to get back into the game, unlocking even more, waiting for the game to launch fully so we can 
jump back in and regrind and unlock even more. Like, honestly, I'm really excited about this game. I've only recently been able to jump into the game and I'm telling you, you guys have got to go try this out for yourself. A big reason for the excitement is the enemies inside of the game. Both the bosses and the regular mobs are creative artistically and also a fun challenge to beat. You can trail these things around pretty easily though, so the threat level of the regular mobs could be increased just a bit. But aside from that, the PvE is great. The mob variety is wild. And something that I never thought I would praise a game for is quests. The thing that got me here was that apparently quests are not always so straightforward. I personally hate doing quests in any game. I'm a major scene skipper, but I started a quest in Once Human by accident by reading some paper. I don't even know if this quest was marked on the map or if it was just by happenstance that I read this paper and started up this quest. But I was then led all the way around a town, reading several papers, eventually leading to a chest. That chest was locked and needed a code, which I was supposed to be getting from the papers, but I was not paying attention, so I had to rerun through the town to figure out the code. Regardless, I spent a good chunk of time doing this non-quest and I loved it. And I don't even know what I got out of that chest at the end. I just, I had fun getting it unlocked. I felt fulfilled. And I haven't even mentioned yet the twist that Once Human puts on combat and the survival shooter genre with what they call deviants, or as I like to call it, the butterfly. Mainly because I've only found a few of these things and I still only use the butterfly. But essentially these are things that you can catch after completing a raid or a big boss or at random spots, I'm guessing. I'm not entirely sure where you can find all of these things at. But each of them have two different combat abilities that you can utilize. The butterfly you get in the tutorial, so it's not much of a spoiler here. I'll go ahead and tell you what it does. The first ability will auto attack things around you for a bit, which can be nice when you're running low on ammo or you got like a little too many zombies around you. Or you can throw it at a boss to weaken it in some way. I'm not entirely sure how it weakened it, but after I hit the boss with the butterfly, this crossbow absolutely slapped. Honestly, I could ramble on for another hour about things inside of Once Human that are really well put together. But honestly, I'm gonna end this video here so I can jump back into the game. Go and test it yourself before the 17th. Come back, tell me how right I was. Also, go ahead and prepare yourself to jump into the official launch on July 9th. Keep an eye on the channel. I'm gonna be covering this game in depth. I'm out.